To my friends at the United West, and my friends on the panel, Station Chief Gary Bernson, Lieutenant General Tom McInerney, Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, and Colonel Allen West, you have my undying appreciation and love. My dear friend, an honorary member of the Jewish people, Allen West. And the purpose of this National Security Summit, America is at a critical crossroads in our global standing, and this is clearly apparent in the Middle East. We are facing a vile existential threat in the Islamic terrorist army known as ISIS. And the reason why I say ISIS is because if people say ISIL, that means that they are not respecting the existence of the modern day state of Israel, because Levant means that there is no Israel. So please, do not say ISIL, always say ISIS. Israel is engaged. Israel is engaged in a new conflagration with Hamas. The Maghreb, North Africa, is falling into the hands of Islamists, and Egypt is confronted with a struggle with an age-old enemy, the Muslim Brotherhood. All of this has come about after President Barack Hussein Obama stated that America's foreign policy would pivot away from the Middle East. This summit will analyze and assess the critical situation developing in the Middle East with Islamic totalitarianism and jihadism, and its effect upon America's national security strategy and relations with regional actors of Egypt, namely Israel. What are the impacts for our ally Israel? What are the regional impacts for Egypt, Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, Libya? What are the courses of action for America in the current Middle East turmoil? Does the United States have an effective foreign policy in the Middle East, and what could be better? As well, how has our intelligence apparatus performed in this situation? How can America leverage diplomatic and economic actions against jihadist supporters such as Iran, Qatar, and Turkey? And can our U.S. military meet the requirements of this very volatile and fluid threat environment and solutions? What are the recommendations for our intelligence community and military strategy in the Middle East. William G. Jerry Boykin, Lieutenant General, United States Army, retired. U.S. Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence from 2002 to 2007. A 36 year military career, 13 years in an organization that he was an originating founding member and also commander of Special Operations Detachment Delta, better known as Delta Force. Not Chuck Norris, Jerry Boyle. <laughs> he was involved in numerous high profile missions, including the 1980 Iran hostage rescue attempt, the 1992 hunt for Pablo Escobar in Colombia, and the Black Hawk Down incident in Mogadishu, Somalia. He's an author, a teacher at Hampton Sydney College in Virginia, and currently is the Executive Vice President at the Family Research Council. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Retired Jerry Boyd. At the end of the 12th of June of this year, I was in Jerusalem when three young Jewish boys were kidnapped 
I was with 150 members of the Israeli Defense Force at the time. I saw an outrage among them that I had never seen, and I've lived in Israel. I've lived in Akko with the Golani Brigade. But I saw an outrage that I had never seen among them before. And I came home and I said to my wife and my friends, they're going to Gaza. They're going to, they, they're going to find these young boys dead and then they're going to Gaza. And there's going to be a bloody conflict and it's not going to be like in the past. And my words proved to be either clairvoyant or prophetic, whichever you choose. Israel has no place to go. And that's what the average American simply does not understand when they talk about proportionality, proportionate responses. Americans do not understand the plight of the average Israeli. This is a very personal thing for me, not only because my children are Jewish, but because when I lived in Israel with the Golani Brigade, the battalion commander there was a guy named Amir Maital. Amir Maital was killed on a raid into South Lebanon. He was shot by a Hezbollah fighter. He was like a brother to me, and this became a very personal issue with me. Lieutenant General Retired Thomas G. McInerney. He's retired from the United States Air Force. He was a command pilot with more than 4,100 flying hours, including 407 combat missions, 243 in O-1s as a Ford Air Controller, 164 in F-4 Charlies, Ds, and Es during the Vietnam War. In addition to his Vietnam service, General McInerney served overseas in NATO and Pacific Air Forces and also commander of the 11th Air Force in Alaska. He is a former United States Air Force Vice Chief of Staff. Currently, he is a Fox News contributor and is a member of the Iran Policy Committee. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Retired Thomas McNamara. Whether it's Hamas, which attacks Israel with thousands of rockets and people want proportionality because there were not enough Israelis killed, or Hezbollah with Gary as an expert on, or ISIS, or Al-Qaeda, CARE, they're all the same. Don't get confused by the alphabet. Know thy enemy. And until you as the average American public start to understand that, and you appreciate more than any, because the Jewish population is the target, they want utter destruction of Israel. And we have not provided the support in the last six plus years to Israel that she deserves. I am very worried about Israel's survival. Our next panel member is sometimes referred to in a very affectionate nickname. And it's because he is willing to go to places that people can't talk about and do things that many people would not be willing to do. That nickname, we affectionately call them the Spooks. <laughs> Garrett Bernstein is a decorated former CIA, Central Intelligence Agency, career officer who served in the Directorate of Operations between October of 1982 and June of 2005. During his time at the CIA, he served as a CIA station chief on three separate occasions and led several of the CIA's most important counterterrorism deployments, including the United States' response to the East Africa Embassy bombings and the 9-11 attacks. He was awarded the Distinguished Intelligence Medal in 2000 and the Intelligence Star in 2004. He ran for the U.S. Senate in 2010 for Chucky e. Schumer's seat, but lost the Republican primary to Jay Townsend, who in turn lost in the general election. And also another claim to his fame, is several of those five senior members of the Taliban that were returned back to the Taliban, he was responsible for their capture. Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Bernstein. No one in this room should underestimate the Secretary General of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah. This is a man at 15 years of age, before Hezbollah was created, was the Amal representative for his town. 
This is a man that studied in southern Iraq in a seminary, which was Bakir al sadr seminary, and he learned the principles of Veliat de Faqi, rule of an Islamic jurist, Khomeini's principles, before Khomeini had even won the revolution in Iran. This is a man that is committed to Iran and loves them, and in the past 30 years has probably received $30 billion from them over the years. Hezbollah is a big organization now. They started as a gang of terrorists, and now they have the ability to deploy a 15,000-man militia to fight in Syria. These are dangerous times, ladies and gentlemen. These are times for serious people that recognize the threats that both Israel and the United States face. And I was just talking about the Shia. We haven't even gotten to Hamas and the other groups. Israel now is facing Hamas in Gaza, Hezbollah in, in, in the southern Lebanese area, and now it's got Al-Nusra Front near the Shaba Farms on that part in the uh, far east where, where the Syrians have pulled back and actually the Filipino army, the, the, the members of the UN have been, written, have been run off. But the fact is, is the number of enemies around Israel are increasing, they're becoming more lethal, and these are threatening both Israel and American interests in the Middle East and in the world. Jerusalem.